Welcome to the Uncomplicating Weight Loss Podcast. My name is Eva Rodriguez, proud Latina, single mom, and certified integrative nutrition, health, weight loss, and mindfulness coach. I'm passionate about teaching women how to balance being busy and healthy without complicated rules or restrictions. On this podcast, I'll be simplifying weight loss concepts and mindset shifts so that you can be confident in your curves. It won't always be easy, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to remind you of the free weight loss resources that I have on my website, www.eva.fit. Be sure to take a minute to head on over and grab my free EFT for weight loss video or take my weight loss quiz to help you figure out what steps you need to take to kickstart your journey. This puts you on my email list and I'm always sending my email list exclusive goodies like meal plans, promo codes, tips, and hacks. Lots of good stuff. So head on over to www.eva.fit. Welcome back, my friends. In today's episode, I'm going to share a simple yet powerful mindset shift that you can start implementing in order to get the results that you want with less mind drama and resistance. Think about something that you love to do as a hobby or as a pastime. Something that brings you joy or peace. This could be reading, cooking, hiking, going to the beach. For me, one of them is dancing. And I just started training again. I had taken a few months off because I had a whole lot going on in my life. And I knew that if I wasn't in the right headspace, I wouldn't be able to be fully present with my coach. And he's very intense. He's, he trains me like a pro. So it's definitely not always fun to be there, but I love dancing. I've been doing it since I was four. So it's always been a part of my life. And even when my lessons are hard, even when I struggle with getting a routine or getting a technique, at the core of it, it still brings me a lot of joy. It always has. So when I think of dancing, the thought is I get to dance. I get to dance today, right? And that's a good feeling. Now think about something that you don't love to do. For a lot of you, it may be going to work on Monday morning. So you may have the thought, damn, I have to go to work tomorrow. And that generates a not so great feeling when you put it that way, right? But the reality here is the difference in the choice of one word. Just one word changes the feeling that your thought about taking the action generates. I get to do fill in the blank versus I have to do fill in the blank. That one word changes how you show up, doesn't it? Think about all the things that you have to do in your life. And I encourage you to write them all down on a sheet of paper. For example, some of mine would be, I have to take care of my son. I have to clean my house. I have to do the laundry. I have to manage my mind. I have to manage my finances. I have to pay my bills on time. I have to be responsible. I have to put gas in my car. I have to take care of my clients. I have to do research. I have to make money. I have to record my podcast. I have to go to the chiropractor every week. And this isn't even everything, right? But our brain naturally thinks in have tos, okay? And of course, the I have to thinking pattern shows up as especially in our health and weight loss journey. So I have to work out. I have to plan my food. I have to drink more water. I have to stop eating sugar and flour. And there's also the shoulds. I should work out more often. I should do yoga. I should meditate more. I should spend more time with my friends and family. I should take more walks. I should be more productive. I should be more focused. Lots of shoulds come along for the ride with the have tos. And the next thought pattern that's never too far behind the I have tos and the I shoulds is I can't. The I can't list may sound like I can't get a handle on this. I can't keep up. I can't seem to figure this out. I can't change this. I can't understand this. You see, words matter. When you believe I have to, I should, or I can't, It changes how you experience each of those actions that you're attaching after the words. It adds an emotional weight to it. It adds a sense of obligation to the process of doing the thing. And it's also unnecessary. 
So an exercise that I recommend is to actually write out categories for your life, like business, career, weight loss, health, social, and ask yourself, what are the things that I believe I have to do in each category? And the reality is, you don't have to do a damn thing. Truly. Hear me out. You don't have to do shit. You're an adult and you can do whatever the fuck you want. Think about it. Think about all the things that you think you have no choice but to do. You do have a choice. You always have a choice. Now, there are consequences to not doing them, but you don't have to do anything. You may be thinking, but I have to take care of my kids. I have no choice. That's not true. There are people in the world who don't take care of their kids. You may be thinking, but I have to work. Also not true. There are lots of people who don't work. But I have to pay taxes. I have to obey the law. Again, you don't have to do shit. There are many people who don't pay taxes or obey the law. They choose not to. So consider that when you're making your list of the things that you have to do. It's important to get honest with yourself about everything that you write on your list. You really do have a choice about all of it. So look at your list of have tos and look for evidence of how that isn't true. You don't have to pay your mortgage. The consequence to not paying it is that you don't have a house. So it's not that you have to pay your mortgage. It's that you want to pay your mortgage because you want to live in your house. So how about I get to pay my mortgage? Doesn't that feel like less of a burden? How about I get to work out today? I get to plan my meals so that I'm making the best and healthiest decisions for me. I get to meditate so that I can clear my mind. Doesn't that feel better than I have to work out? I have to plan my meals. I have to meditate. And so once you have your list written down, you're going to go back and change every I have to in the sentence to I get to. I want you to see how this changes your sentence from an obligation to an opportunity. Read it out loud and you'll see how different it feels to say, I get to, instead of, I have to. Ask yourself, what opportunity does this present for me? So if your sentence was, I have to make a food plan for tomorrow, you switch to, I get to make a food plan for tomorrow. What opportunity does this present? Well, one is that you get to utilize your mature adult brain to make a decision now that supports your weight loss goal so you won't have to make one tomorrow when you're too hungry to make the best choices for yourself. This gives you the opportunity to practice making aligned decisions from a place of self-love. You get to practice the skill of considering and choosing with intentionality what you want ahead of time so that you don't just choose what you want in the moment or choose on autopilot. By changing just one word in your sentences changes them from outside pressure to inside desire. It changes them from extrinsic to intrinsic. As you're writing your list, I encourage you to also ask yourself, what am I believing that I should do or I'm supposed to do? And what am I believing that I can't do? Because this is where you're going to get your list of shoulds and your list of can'ts. Now, for all of your list of shoulds, you're going to change should to want. So instead of, I should meditate every day, it will read, I want to meditate every day. Instead of, I should journal, it will read, I want to journal. One thing you may find when changing your should thoughts to want to is that some of the things on this list of things that you think you should do or are supposed to be doing aren't things that you actually want to be doing. They may be things that other people have told you to do or that society suggests you should do. So changing should to want will reveal whether or not the thoughts ring true for you. And if they don't, then either don't do them or at least work on figuring out why. You believe that you should be doing something when you really don't want to. 
Because remember, it's always a choice. So here are some questions that you can ask yourself. How do I know that I should? Who says that I should? Do I want to believe them? Is this even a credible source? Now let's move on to your list of I can'ts. There are two different kinds of I can'ts. There is the I can'ts that refer to your capability and the I can'ts that refer to restriction. For example, I can't figure out how to do this versus I can't eat sugar. So your I can't list needs to be separated out into two because there are two different shifts depending on the reference point. We want to change out the I can'ts that are in reference to capability with I will or I am going to. So I can't figure out how to do this becomes I will figure out how to do this. Or I am going to figure out how to do this. If your brain offers objections to believing this, then we want to ask, How? How will I figure this out? Brainstorm some things that you might try. If your brain offers, I don't know, ask yourself, what if I did know? Are there any examples of someone else who's doing this thing that I think I can't do? How are they accomplishing it? What's different about them compared to me? Sometimes finding an example can be really helpful because if it's possible for another person, it's possible for you as well. Now, we want to change out the I can't that are in reference to any rules or restrictions that you have for yourself to I don't. What's so powerful about this shift is that it's shifting you from restriction to identity, which is a much more powerful declaration. When you think I can't eat dessert or I can't drink wine or I can't have sugar, it disempowers you. It's basically saying there's something outside of me forcing this restriction onto me. It's not my choice. It's the program. It's the meal plan. It's the person who told me that I can't. It's their choice for me. And that doesn't feel good at all. Whereas I don't eat ice cream or I don't drink wine or I don't eat sugar. That's a strong statement of who you are. It's you saying, I'm a person who takes care of myself in this way. These are the boundaries that I've set with myself. It's so much more powerful, right? Than I can't. As you start to shift these I can'ts to I don'ts, notice if you come up against any resistance and then question it. You can ask yourself, when is this true for me? You can also add right now or today to your sentence if you have a lot of trouble believing it. Because when you say, I don't eat dessert, your brain might be offering you counter arguments like, well, you did yesterday, or you usually eat dessert. So that's when you want to find a true sentence that counters it. I don't eat dessert today. I don't eat dessert right now. I know it sounds a little weird, but it's more like a ladder thought. Just finding the next accessible thought that's believable for you. And then you practice believing it. And then you keep practicing and you practice some more. When it comes to mindset shifts and rewiring your thought patterns, you have to practice. You have to practice these new sentences, these new beliefs until they feel true. And the more you practice, the more your brain will look for and find evidence that they are true. And the more strongly you will believe them. This changes your thought pattern from a vicious cycle to a virtuous cycle. Both are feedback loops. One is a negative feedback loop and the other is a positive feedback loop, encouraging you to keep doing this. The words you choose will determine the outcome and results that you get. So what are all the things that you get to do now? What are all the things that you want to do? I encourage you to do this exercise of writing it all down and crossing out the words, I have to, I should, and I can't, and replacing them with, I get to, I want to, and I will, or I don't. So you can visually see and feel the difference that changing one word can have on your entire mindset. Who would have thought that changing one word in a sentence could be so powerful? That's the power of word choices. And the choice 
is always yours. That's all for today. Bye for now. Thanks so much for tuning in this week and trusting that none of this has to be complicated. At the end of the day, I want you to feel empowered to know that you can have the health, the body, and the life that you desire. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode and tag me on Instagram while listening at It's Eva Rodriguez so that I can support you along your journey. I'll talk to you next week. Bye.